Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. Picture this, you're sitting in front of your study material, staring at a page that might as well be written in hieroglyphics for all the sense it's making. The ticking clock on the wall is louder than your thoughts. Your phone's constant notifications are a siren song luring you away from your task. Sound familiar? Today we're diving into the world of intense focus, and I'm going to share how to study effectively with intense focus in Just For Steps. So let's grab a cup of tea and let's jump in. Step number one is avoiding distractions. Remember that scene in your favorite movie where the hero has to disarm a bomb? The world outside the bomb room ceases to exist. There is just them, the bomb, and the ticking clock. That's what we want to replicate when we're studying, without the impending doom, of course. By creating an environment free from external distractions, you're allowing yourself to step into that bomb room with just you, your study material, and the ticking clock. This digital detox is the ultimate secret weapon to conquer the enemy of distraction. Now, I can already hear some of you saying, but my phone is my life, I can't just switch it off. Well, allow me to introduce you to an interesting concept. It's called attention residue. Every time we shift our attention from one task to another, a residue of our attention stays behind. So when you're studying and your phone buzzes, even if you just glance at it and return to studying, a part of your focus is still on that notification. Imagine studying while part of your brain is still stuck on that funny cat meme from Instagram. Not quite the ideal study partner, right? And here's something even more shocking. Research suggests it can take up to 23 minutes to regain our full attention after an interruption. So that quick glance at your phone is costing you more time than you think. Think of your attention as a precious resource. You wouldn't leave a tap running and waste water. So why let your attention seep away to distractions? Turning off your phone, blocking distracting websites, and creating a dedicated study environment can conserve that vital resource. Mastering this first step is all about retraining our minds to realize that in the grand scheme of things, a few hours of disconnection won't result in us missing anything crucial. What you gain in return, however, is an intense, effective, and rewarding study session. And that's a trade-off I can get behind. Moving on, step number two is setting the ambient. Imagine for a moment you're a director on a movie set. You're creating a scene that needs to induce suspense. Would you use a cheery, upbeat track to accompany this moment? Probably not. Just like a skilled director, we too need to pick the right soundtrack for our studying sessions. Studies show that listening to music slightly decreases the effectiveness of studying. But given that it may help you study longer, it may be a trade-off worth having. The key is to choose instrumental music. Now you might be wondering, why instrumental music? Why not my favorite pop songs? It all comes back to the way our brain processes information. Words are powerful, and your brain naturally tries to focus on them, which distracts you from the task at hand. Instrumental music or ambient noise, like rainfall or white noise, creates a kind of audio blanket around you. It's not invasive and it doesn't demand your attention, but it does manage to effectively drown out any distracting background noise. It's like building an invisible sound fortress around your study space. One app that I find particularly helpful is Endel, which is a groundbreaking app designed to enhance focus and boost productivity. But it's not just any sound app. It's more like your personal sound architect. Endel creates adaptive soundscapes, uniquely tailored to your environment, behavior, and even your heart rate. These scientifically engineered sounds help you concentrate, relax, or even sleep. If you like the idea, give it a try using the link below. But the power of ambient setting doesn't stop at sound. Visuals play a crucial role too. Clear your study space of unnecessary items. A cluttered space can lead to a cluttered mind. Instead, create an environment that invites focus. And let's not forget about lighting. A well-lit space not only prevents eye strain, but can also help keep you awake and focused. Natural light is best, but if you're a night owl, a desk lamp with a daylight bulb can do the trick. So we've sidestepped distractions, and we've set the perfect ambience. It's now time to dig deeper into our third step, setting clear goals. If we sit down with just a vague idea of what we should be studying, we might end up lost wandering aimlessly and ultimately procrastinating. But when we define specific goals, we have a clear path we can follow. For instance, instead of saying, I want to study cardiovascular physiology, try I want to understand how cardiac valves work. And here's the magic of specific goals. They transform a daunting task into something more manageable and less procrastination inducing. It's like trying to eat an entire cake in one bite versus enjoying it slice by slice. The first scenario seems impossible and overwhelming. The second is absolutely doable and even enjoyable. Another powerful strategy here is using the SMART goal setting technique. This stands for specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. Following these guidelines will ensure that your goals are not only clear, but also realistic and tied to a specific time frame. 
By using the SMART technique, you're not just saying, I want to study physiology. Instead, you're saying, I want to study cardiovascular physiology within a certain time, and here's why it's important to me. Can you see how much more powerful that is? Now that we've cracked the code of setting clear goals, we're that much closer to achieving our ultimate intense focus. The last step is setting time constraints. Time, it seems, is always on the move, yet we often find ourselves in a relentless chase trying to catch it. But what if I told you there's a way to dance with time instead of racing against it? A notion that is not as absurd as it may seem, especially once we understand the concept of Parkinson's law. Named after Cyril Parkinson, a British historian and author, Parkinson's law states that work expands to fill the time available for its completion. It's a counterintuitive principle that tells us the more time we have, the longer we'll take to complete a task. It's like inflating a balloon. Given a large enough balloon and unlimited air, you could keep inflating it endlessly. If you have an entire day to study one chapter, according to Parkinson's law, you'll probably take the whole day. Your study session inflates to fill the vast time container you've set for it. But what if we restrict that time? What if we tighten the container? This is where time constraints come into play. The Pomodoro technique is a brilliant way to employ this principle. Here, you break your study session into time-bound intervals, typically 25 minutes long, separated by short breaks. Each interval, or Pomodoro, becomes a mini container for a specific task. The clock is ticking, and instead of inducing stress, it instigates a focus sprint. Now your study session becomes a game against the clock. Each Pomodoro becomes a race to learn and understand a concept. And the best part? Parkinson's law works in your favor. The time constraint fuels efficiency, helping you absorb information more effectively. So next time you sit down to study, remember, time is not an endless sea, but a series of islands. Hop from one to the next, conquering each with the power of focused, time-bound study sessions. You'll find that the race against the clock isn't so daunting after all. So that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, you may like this other video on essential study tips for med students. See you there.